Hello and welcome to, uh, no, to the Blobber Plays, here, book three, there we go, book three of our Lone Wolf Wednesday series. The story so far. In the northern lands of Summerland, it had been the custom for many centuries to send the children of the warrior lords to the monastery of Kai, where they were taught the skills and disciplines of their noble fathers. You, a lone wolf, now the last of the warrior lords of Summerland. A year ago, the ancient enemy of your people, the dark lords of Helgadad, invaded Summerland and completely devastated the Kai monastery. All of the warriors were in attendance for the feast of Femarn. All except you were massacred. You fought your way to Holmgard, capital of your country, where the king sent you upon a desperate quest. Your mission was fraught with great danger, for Summerland had been betrayed by one of its own magicians, Vonotar the traitor. His agents sought to kill you at every opportunity, but your skill and strength defeated their evil aims. You returned to Holmgard at the head of a great fleet. The allies of Durinor and destroyed the Dark Lord army that besieged your capital. Much of Summerland was ruined by the war. The rich farmlands were laid waste and many towns razed to the ground. But the Summerlanding are a tough people and undaunted by the enormous task that lay ahead. They set about rebuilding the worn-torn Summerland with such determination that now, one year later, few of the scars of war remain visible. For the crucial part that you played in the victory, the king has bestowed upon you the rank and title of Free Earl of Summerland, a rare honour for one so young. The ruins of the Kai Monastery and much of the surrounding lands are now Freeland under your protection. Work to rebuild the monastery was about to commence when disturbing news from the north prompted the king to summon you to the capital. Many merchants, returning from summer trading expeditions to Kalt, told of the fall of the Brumelmark, le the leader of the Ice Barbarians. The description of the hunchbacked magician who has seceded the fierce Br Brumelmark beg pardon, fits only one man, Vonatar the traitor. After the defeat of the Dark Lords, Vonatar escaped to the frozen wastes of Kalt. He made his way to the ice fortress of Ikea, where, through deception, he tricked the cruel Brumelmark into adopting him as his magician. It was a mistake that was to cost the leader his fortress and his life. The news that Vonatar still lives spreads like wildfire through Summerland. Thousands of summer lending surround the capital and demand that he be made to pay for his treachery. So great is the general outcry that the king is obliged to promise that the traitor will be brought back to Holmgard and made to stand trial for his crimes. For you, Lone Wolf, the king's promise is the start of a quest that will pit you against a hated foe, deep within the hostile caverns of Kalt. We get to have another skill now, so do we pick Better Hiding, Immunity from Enemies that have Psychic Attack thing, Small Scale Telekinesis, so like the Force, we can like lift small objects and push and pull small objects, or possibly plus two weapon skill. The trouble with this is, because the Summer Sword is so good, if you don't get weapon skill in sword, it feels really bad because it's just kind of a wasted skill. At least until you eventually potentially lose the summer sword. So I don't think weapon skill. There's telekinesis, immunity to psychic attack, and hiding. I think we'll go with small scale telekinesis. Move small objects with the power of concentration. Before leaving the northern port of Askaven, you're escorted into a hall. Add this number to your gold. 
If you've completed a previous book, add this to the book that you carried over. However, however, there is a maximum amount of carryover money allowed. Before you set sail, you may pick any two of these things to add to your list. So. Sword, short sword, padded leather, waistcoat, spear hammer, war hammer, axe, healing potion, food. So what do I want more? Do I want a padded leather waistcoat? Maximum health plus two. Yes, please. And then... What are the special rations? No, no, no. I want to read about them, please. Well, no. I guess I've just got special, ra special rations. Meal star. All right. Your mission is fraught with danger. Kalt is a bleak and hostile land. Your foe is a cunning one. Use the map to help you plot your course to the Ice Fortress. Make notes as you progress through the story. That will be of great help in your future adventures. Many things you find will aid you during your adventure. Special items will be of use in future Lone Wolf adventures. Though some may be red herrings. Be selective in what you decide to keep. There are many routes to the Ice Fortress, but only one will enable you to capture Vonatar and return to Summerland with the minimum of danger. A wise choice in your dis disciplines and a great deal of courage should enable any player to complete the mission, no matter how poor their starting health and attack. Completing previous Lone Wolf's adventures is not essential for this quest. The betrayal of your country can be avenged by bringing the traitor to justice. Good luck. Even before you accept the task of bringing Vonatar to justice, preparations were being made for your voyage to Cult. The captain of the summer lending warship, Cardinal, having returned from a long Culter Ease patrol, was ordered to await your arrival at Anskaven. During the night, food, ice equipment, and canoe dog teams were taken on board. The mission was highly secret. Only senior members of the crew were told of its true nature. The plan is to set you ashore at Hal Bluff. Drop anchor and wait your return. A team of trusted guides will lead you from the bluff to Ikaya. Once inside the ice fortress, you are to hunt down and capture Vonatar and return with your guides to the ship. Your mission must be accomplished within 30 days, for winter is closing in and no ship will withstand the grip of the Cult Ice Pact. If you do not return in time, the captain will set sail without you. For six days, the Cardinal sails across the stormy Culteries without running into a storm. Well, then why describe it as stormy? But anyway, but every day, the temperature steadily drops until a layer of ice covers the decks. On the morning of the seventh day, the snow-capped island of Tola is sighted on the horizon. Soon after... A light wind rises from the west. At first, there appears to be little danger, but within half an hour, a furious blizzard is blowing, and all sight of land quickly vanishes into the scudding? Definition. Scudding. Move fast in a straight line as if it was driven by the wind. Or, Scottish, to slap, beat, or spank. Neither of those make sense. Oh well, I give up. All day, the furious gale rages. Tremendous winds slice the tops of the huge grey waves, and water crashes over the decks, the masts, and the rigging of the ship, freezing almost immediately onto solid ice. The sides of the ship become several feet thick with seawater. It is not until early evening that the weather clears, and although the wind still blows strongly, the force of the gale is spent. You are soon to discover that the gale has blown the ship nearly 30 miles off course, along the lip of the Lyuk ice shelf. You know that to return to Hal Bluff would be a waste of a day, so you decide to land on the ice shelf and start your mission from here. As the last of the canoe dogs are carried ashore, your guides tell you 
are the two possible routes to Ikaya from here. The first route involves a 130 mile trek to Cloudmaker Mountain, and then following the difficult terrain of the Viad Glacier, a further 100 miles must be covered before you att attempt to arrive at the Ice Fortress. The alternate route involves a longer journey of 180 miles to the Hrod Basin, followed by a trek of 100 miles through Storm Giant Pass. Even if the weather and good luck hold, either route will involve 10 days of hard trekking. You should consult the map of Cult before making your decision. And so now we have a new map. We started here, which joins... If we had the old map, you'd, you'd be able to see how this map is like the very top of the old map, and now this is the second map. So we've come from here up to here. We were meant to head more that way, but we got sidetracked a bit, and we're now over here, and we're trying to get to up here. We can either head along the glacier, or over this way, and then through Storm Giant Pass. Hmm. I mean, following a glacier sounds easier than Storm's Giant Pass to me. So I guess we'll attempt the shorter but more difficult. Ah, but it's called more difficult. Uh, yeah, we'll take the longer, more easier route then. You are to travel to Ikaya by sled. Two sleds have been loaded with enough food and equipment for the mission, each drawn by a team of six canoe dogs. This sturdy breed is native to cult, and they make ideal sled dogs. Their thick, tawny coats and powerful chests, as well as their renowned vigor. And enthusiasm makes them well suited to the harsh work ahead. Your three guides, Irian, Fenor, and Dice, are all experienced trappers, skilled at survival in this icy desert and have experienced its many unseen dangers. Once the dogs are harnessed, you and Irin climb aboard your sled and signal the others to lead the way. Staring across the frozen expanse of the Uljuk ice shelf, you see the white glare of the Hrod Basin edge. Ice blink, they call it, says Irian, his eyes glint from deep inside the hood. It's the reflection of the ice shelf. It looks no more than four miles away at most, but it's nearer forty than four. The air of cults can be very deceptive. The weather is bright and windless, and you make excellent progress on the first day. As darkness sets in, you decide to set up camp for the night. The sleighs are drawn together, and the tent is erected in the salient... I thought that meant important, like promptly there, away from the wind. Ah, angle, pointing outwards. Okay. Uh, if you have six cents, turn to 35. We do. You get an uneasy feeling that something or someone is watching you. You leave the tent and peer into the night for some sign of life, but the snow and darkness hide everything. You return to your tent and go to sleep with one hand on your weapon in case of a surprise attack. When you awake, you sense that something has changed. It takes a minute to realize the incessant howling of the night winds has ceased. It is a beautiful morning, says Irian cheerfully, his head appearing through the tent flap. You quickly climb out of your sleeping furs and stare over the icy landscape. The cult air is fresh and clear. You see a strong mirage in the distance that seems to throw the land up much higher than it could possibly be. We should make it to the rock by nightfall, says Fenner as he busily pulls a reluctant dog into its harness. Best to make camp there tonight. Mm. The shelter is good. This far from the sea, a blizzard can whip across the shelf from nowhere in a few minutes. I've known trappers to be blown for miles if they're careless or unlucky enough to be caught out on the shelf with no cover. That day, the canoe dogs pull strong and true, for the going is smooth across the ice shelf. By nightfall, you have reached the rock. A splinter of granite that has thrust through the ice shelf. 
Its curious shape reminds you of the king's citadel in Holmgard. You make camp on the leeward side of the rock to avoid the worst of the night winds. Pick a number from the table. Random number table says... Four. The following day, a strong wind rises from the north. Hour upon hour, it blows relentlessly into your face. The Ljuk ice shelf becomes a mass of twisted slabs of ice, jutting upwards at every angle. Progress is slow and difficult. By midday, you shiver with the cold, your lips cracked and bleeding, and the icy blasts have covered you with a thin film of snow. You steer your sleigh through the narrow passage at the edge of the ice shelf, where it meets the Hrod Basin. Here you are sheltered from the wind, and for the first time, you can see ahead clearly. There's a yeti! Suddenly, shrieks from above warn you that you are not the only creatures seeking shelter here. Within seconds, three large Bacnar jump from the ice wall and land with a crash on the sleds. Your fellow driver, Irian, is thrown against the ice and collapses unconscious. You are prevented from going to his aid by the hungry and ravenous Bacnar. There is no hope of evading it, and you must fight to the death. Has a lot of health. But we have an absurd amount of extra combat skill on him. Summer Sword OPOP. OP. You are able to defeat your enemy without taking too much damage. If you win combat, turn to this page. The heavy beast rolls off the sledge and lies motionless on the ice. Fenor has managed to light a torch and is thrusting the framing, flaming brand at the other two. They are terrified by the fire and quickly turn and flee. You cheer as they disappear and turn to congratulate your guides, but are stunned to see that they have already started to skin the dead Bacnar. You watch with disgust as Dice opens the beast from throat to belly with his hunting knife. He quickly pulls back the white fur and scoops out handfuls of thick oil. The smell of the oil is horrible. So horrible, in fact, that the dogs bury their noses in the snow to avoid it. You cannot believe your own eyes when the two guides start to rub the oil all over their faces and clothes. Bacnar oil! Nothing like it for keeping warm and dry. He puts his hand from the dead beast and offers you a fistful of the putrid jelly. I mean, there are guides for a reason. They know better. The smell is revolting and you try desperately to hold your breath as you smear handfuls of the greasy slime inside your jacket. As the oil penetrates your skin, you feel a warm glow as if you were near a fire. The more you apply, the warmer you become. You also notice that the awful smell is gradually fading. Note the fact that you have applied Bacnar oil to your action chart, although it does not take up any space and only applies for the duration of this adventure. When it soaks into your skin, you lose your sense of smell. Just as well, replies Dice. I don't think I could stand living with myself otherwise. The oil gives excellent insulation from the bitter cold of Kalt, and may save you valuable endurance points in the future. Irian regains consciousness and is soon scooping out the Bacnar carcass for himself. Light is now fading fast, and you must decide to pitch camp in the narrow pass. You prepare a meal, and you take it in turns to sit watch, just in case the Bacnar decide to return. <laughs> the next morning arrives bright and windless. The sun pierces the thin layer of cloud, batting the east, bathing the east in a soft pink glow. This beautiful vision reminds you that the Kai Masters once told you that the light of Kalt is unlike anywhere else in Magnamund. With tent and equipment packed, you leave the pass and venture out onto the Hrod Basin. A hundred miles of open ice now lie between you and Storm Giant's Pass. At first, the journey is easy. The basin has been worn smooth by the wind, and no crevasse lurk unseen beneath the hard, dense snow. 
but at dawn on the third day, events take a turn for the worse. You are awoken from a deep sleep by Dice, shaking your shoulder. He's frightened. What's wrong, you ask? Still bleary-eyed and sleepy. Ice barbarians on the horizon. Twenty. <sighs> Maybe more. Five wind sleighs and a warrior escort. I think that they've seen us. In an instant, you have climbed out of your sleeping furs and begun to pack away the tent. Dice is indeed correct. They are ice barbarians and they are headed towards you. If they catch us, we're good as dead. He says Fina as he ties the last of the equipment to the sleigh. The ice barbarians of cult are a fierce and warlike race of nomads. For thousands of years, they have traveled the icy wasteland, trapping furs and herding mammoths. Their only contact with the rest of Magnamund is through the trading post of Ulyuk. In summer, when the coast around Ulyuk is free from ice, they journey there to trade their furs for weapons and tools, as there is no iron or wood in Kalt. They hate all except for their own kind and kill anyone they find who dares trespass within their icy domain. You soon hear their war cries, less than three miles distant. And for the first time since you landed, you pray for a blizzard to hide your escape. You have covered less than a mile when the first of the ice barbarian scouts appear to the north on skis. At first there are only two of the fearsome warriors, but soon they are joined by three others. Large, muscular, and decked in furs. Some of them wear bone armor. Despite their size, they glide across the snow with an almost feline grace and speed. Each of them has a pole attached to his back, from which a f small flag flutters. So they're essentially skiing... Skiing samurai. Suddenly, a bone-tipped arrow whistles past your knee and embeds itself in the sleigh. An ice barbarian scout skis past to your right. He is less than ten yards away, and you can clearly see his slanted eyes and sharp cheekbones. You realize that what you had mistaken for muscle and fur is in fact an ice barbarian child. Each scout is carrying a large backpack containing a small child. These children are armed with small bone bows and they fire a constant stream of arrows as their fathers ski nearer and nearer. <laughs> the children are in charge of this society and they ride their adult mounts around. The war humans. Saddle the war humans. Suddenly, Irian falls, an arrow buried in his back. Dice runs to his aid, but is shot down before he has taken a dozen steps. Fenor is hit, an arrow passing straight through his throat. He bravely staggers on for a minute before collapsing in the snow. You are now on your own. An ice barbarian scout skis past to your left, and returns towards you, head on. He has a spear under one arm, leveled at your chest. Do we fight? Or try and escape? They're on skis. I think we have to fight. Combat skill 20, endurance 28. Let's go. We one hit KO. Yeah. No! If he loses more endurance points than you in the f in the first round of combat, turn to 271. Your attack has caused him to lose his balance. He stumbles in a flurry of snow and his skis broken. The fur-clad child rolls clear of his father's backpack and lies face downwards in the snow. The ice barbarian scout is badly dazed, but he is already staggering to his feet. Grab the child as a hostage and try to escape. If so, turn to 262, or attack the scout before he regains his senses. The ice barbarian is on his knees as you enter combat. He cannot react to your attack during his first two rounds. Ignore any endurance points you lose during these first two rounds of combat. We finish killing our enemy. The dead ice barbarian's child cowers over his father's body and stares at you with hatred, blazing in his eyes. 
you notice that the others are closing, and you must quickly act to save yourself. You decide to use the boy as a hostage, but he is like a wild animal. He bites and scratches and kicks to free himself from your grip. You manage to hang on to the struggling child and remove a bone dagger from his boot to prevent him stabbing you in the back. The ice barbarians have dragged themselves up into a circle around you, but they dare not attack while you're holding one of their children as a hostage. Holding your dagger to his throat, you slowly inch your way towards the sleigh. You soon realize you will never be able to outdistance them on a loaded sleigh, though. You have to think of something, and quickly. Cut the equipment loose. Free the child and escape on the unloaded sleigh. Or keep the boy a hostage. No, we, we, don't, we don't need our hostage. Letting him go at the last possible moment, you grab the sleigh whip and lash the dogs, driving them for everything they are worth. On all sides, arrows whistle past and several thud into the framework of the empty sled. A couple of ice barbarian scouts give chase, but your dog team is now much faster and you soon outdistance their arrows. By nightfall, you reach the edge of the Viad Mountains. This gentle granite range rises sheer out of the ice and snow and prevents you, oh sorry, presents you with an impassable barrier on your moonless night. Meanwhile, a wind arises from the west, heralding a night's squall. You must find shelter or you'll surely perish in the blizzard. If you have either tracking or sixth sense, go here. Or you could look for shelter. Or you could go back south. No. Use our spidey sense slash tracking. Your skills reveal to you that there is a network of caves less than a couple of hundred yards to the south. You abandon the sled and search southwards. You have explored only a hundred yards of the rock face when you discover a large fissure. The entrance to a cave. In your eagerness to escape from the bitter wind, you quickly enter and... In the darkness, fail to notice the crevasse that divides the cave in two. In a tumble of ice and snow, you fall head first into the dark. <clears throat> hmm. You fall over 30 feet and land flat on your back in the snow-filled crevasse. You are surrounded by stalagmites, sharp and jagged ice. But you have miraculously escaped death and injury. Shaken and thankful to be alive, you stagger to your feet and grasp a crystal stalagmite for support. You slowly become aware that you can see your hands quite clearly. A faint light is seeping from a fissure to your left. With curiosity getting the better of you, you stagger across the crevasse floor and explore the mysterious cave. After a few hundred yards, you find yourself in a huge cavern that spreads out in all directions as far as the eye can see. You've entered the caverns of cult, and are now looking at the uncharted world that few summer lending have ever seen. This massive underground labyrinth was constructed by the ancients, many ages before the summer lending set foot on Magnamund. Its wide avenues, temples and arenas once echoed to the sounds of a race for creatures for whom the ice was a natural home. Malare bowls still hang from the ceiling, bathing the caverns in their eternal light. You trek steadily northwards for nearly six hours until you arrive at the bank of a fast-flowing meltwater river. On the opposite bank, you see a tunnel leading off into the distance. You can find no apparent way of crossing the deep river except by using the ice flows that bob up and down on its surface, jumping from one to the next. You could get to the opposite bank, but it will not be easy. You will have to jump at least three to reach the other side. Pick a number from the random number table. If you have hunting, you can add two. If, you, if your current endurance is less than eight, deduct two. We are good. Running from the tunnel entrance, you quickly leave the icy river far behind. You follow the tunnel for countless hours as it bends its way northwards. It becomes impossible to recall what hour of the day it is. The perpetual half-light of the caverns never changes. Through fissures in the wall of the tunnel, you catch glimpses of other chambers, and you marvel at the sheer scale of the labyrinth. Ooh. 
You are suddenly asleep on... No, no. You are nearly asleep on your feet when you suddenly detect the aroma of cooked meat. It is coming from a chamber just a few yards ahead of you. You are hungry and must soon eat. Sure, let's investigate the chamber. You see two men in ragged clothes huddled together beside a fire, burning inside a small metal bowl. Over the flames, the skinned carcasses of a small animal is roasting. The men are old and toothless and have a strange glint of madness in their slanted eyes. Kill them! The two men stare at you in horror and fumble for their weapons. You have killed one before the other even starts to fight back. He is desperate and attacks you with great fury. You must fight to the death. Victory. You make a quick search of the bodies and discover that one of them has a triangle of blue stone hanging by a chain around his neck. If you wish to keep it, mark it as a special item on your action chart. You are very hungry and quickly consume the cooked animal, pausing only to spit out the bones. You notice that the fire is burning in a strange half-spherical bowl. The other half of the sphere lies on the icy floor note nearby. You find that both halves fit together perfectly. When you open them, you discover that the fire still burns inside. If you wish to keep the fire sphere, put it in your jacket and mark it on your action chart. You finish the last scraps of food and re return to the tunnel. Sure. Sure. Unless you have just eaten, lose three endurance. Because of hunger, you continue along the tunnel for over a mile, but you soon become tired and stop to sleep. If you awake, when you awake, feeling refreshed, you have no idea of how long you have slept. The light of the caverns never changes. You continue onwards, mile after mile, passing through a series of huge ice walls containing towering pillars of crystal. In one vast chamber, you're mesmerized by the beautiful sight of a shimmering crystal ceiling. Beyond this chamber lies an even greater spectacle, a narrow passage leading on to the ledge running around the brink of a huge chasm over half a mile wide. As you edge your way around this awesome void, you try not to look down into the wind-swept depths many miles below. You have been on the ledge for only a few minutes when a noise behind you makes you glance back. You see that you are being followed by a monstrous two-headed serpent. We do have tracking and animal kinship. You recognize it to be a Javanek. Oh, sorry, a Javek. A two-headed and deadly poisonous ice snake. As it slithers near you, you can see the jaw and its second head and the yellow curved fangs dripping with venom. It moves quickly and you know that you will not be able to outrun it on the narrow ledge. You remove the fire sphere from your jacket, splitting it into two halves and placing them upon the narrow ledge. The Javik hisses loudly, both its heads weaving and darting at you. It is desperate to attack, but simply will not approach the fire sphere. Instead, it attempts to slither around the flames, but the ledge is so narrow, it cannot pass without singeing itself. Eventually, and angrily but powerlessly, the strange reptile resigns itself to failure and disappears back along the ledge into the passageway below. You can retrieve the fire sphere and continue your exploration. You reach a tunnel on the far side of the chasm and follow it for many miles. You arrive at an enormous chamber, the ceiling of which towers 500 feet above you. An icy wind blowing through the many fissures that crack the ceiling whips around the hole. If you wish to search for a way of climbing up and through the fissures, turn to 335. If you decide to press on and look for an exit on the far side of the hole, yes please. You discover a low passage that opens into a cavern full of stalagmites. There are two exits in the opposite wall. Both disappear into darkness. In the snow around the entrance of both tunnels are many strange tracks. We have tracking. The tracks have been made by dangerous and carnivorous creatures called Bacnar. 
If you run into them in the confines of a dark and narrow tunnel, your chances of survival will be slim indeed. Although your Kai discipline has enabled you to identify the tracks, you don't know which tunnel they occupy. There's certain danger ahead, but you're not sure in which direction. After a short walk, you arrive at the massive ice hall, full of crystal stalagmites and stalactites. The floor is covered with animal tracks and bones, yet the vast hall seems empty and still. You notice the northern wall is a completely smooth surface of granite blocks stretching skywards to the icy ceiling over a hundred feet above. You realize that you are staring at the foundation stones of Ikaya. You have reached the ice fortress. Yeah, we got to the ice fortress. So far, so good. Partially obscured by a large mound of crystals, you can make out a ramp leading up to the massive stone door of the fortress wall. Your discovery brings renewed hope. If you can gain entry to Ikaya and quickly capture Vonatar, there is still time to reach your ship before the pack ice starts to freeze. Yeah, let's search the bone littered floor. You discover that many of the bones scattered among the stalagmites are human in origin. Shattered skulls, skeletal hands, rib cages lie half buried in the ice. You're about to abandon your search when a small box made of carved bone catches your eye. Open it. What's in the box? The bone box contains a beautiful diamond. Its many facets gleam and sparkle even in the dim half-light of the ice hole. In Summerland, a jewel of this size and quality would be worth thousands of crowns. If you wish to keep the diamond, slip it into your pocket and mark it as a special item. Yes, please. Giga Crystal, yes. As you climb the slippery stone ramp, the sound of cracking ice makes you spin around. The large mound of crystal at the base of the ramp is beginning to move. The crystals are alive! You stare in disbelief as the mound is transformed into a writhing mass of crystal coils. The coils unwind and the ice creature slithers towards you. I will fight it. This strange creature is a crystal frost worm. A scavenging beast living on the remains of the unfortunate creatures that enter the cavern. Its hard skin is almost transparent and its internal organs can be seen pulsating inside. A large mouth opens in a crystalline head to reveal the row upon row of jagged crystal teeth. Your back is pressed to the stone door and there is no way to avoid the monster. Fight to the death, immune to mind blast. But it's got garbage skill even if it has good health, so... Butter scratch. Once you've won combat, turn to three. You watch with a mixture of fascination and revulsion as each segment of the creature shatters and slowly dissolves into the ice. Soon all that remains of the frost worm are the undigested contents of its stomach. To your surprise, in the center of the mess of fetid flesh and bone, you see the shank of an ornate silver key. If you wish to take the key, yes please, the key is coated with corrosive digestive acid that burns through your mittens and attacks your fingers. Suffer one damage. You drop the key and plunge your hand into the snow to ease your pain. If you wish to keep the key, you can wipe it in the snow before placing it in your pocket, but remember to mark it. Yes, please. Key, yes. The fortress door is completely smooth. It has no visible lock, hinge, or keyhole. Turning your attention to the granite wall, you notice that one of the massive blocks is different from the others. A small triangle has been cut into its surface. Do we have... Didn't we take one of those from one of the... No? No, triangle of blue stone. Yeah, we took it from the dead... The dead one that... We then took his child hostage. 
Removing the blue stone triangle from around your neck, you press it onto the granite wall. It is a perfect fit, and you immediately feel a tremor running through the ledge on which you are standing, followed by a grinding noise of stone upon stone. The door opens, but after it has opened less than three feet, it begins to close. Without a moment's hesitation, you dive into the fortress, and the door crashes shut behind you. You may still keep the triangle. The corridor in which you now stand is far warmer than the icy cavern outside. For the first time in many days, you can lower the hood of your cloak and remove your mittens without risking frostbite. You notice that the stone passage ascends to a landing where other passages branch off to the east. Mlare bowls hang at regular intervals along the ceiling. There are natural light illuminating the carved walls. As you approach the landing, you notice an archway leading into a small room beyond. A strange sight meets your eyes. Ragged furs, pottery shards, and the debris of hundreds of years seems to have been thrown into this chamber. A large lever protrudes from the wall besides the archway. If you wish to enter the room and investigate, turn here. Pull the lever, go here, or explore eastwards. Well, let's go have a look at the map. Sorry. The map. But there's no more info about the inside of the, um, the Ice Fortress. So, investigate what's in the room. After ten minutes of searching the room, you discover an old fur backpack and a coil of rope. Take the backpack only if you do not possess one. The rope counts as two backpack items, taking up an extra slot. Sure. We're up to seven of eight. Finally satisfied there is nothing else of value in the junk room, you may leave. You soon reach the bottom of a flight of broad stone steps that ascend northwards to a landing, 33 above. The centre of each step has been worn smooth by the feet of countless creatures that once inhabited the lower levels of cold Ikea. As you climb, you wonder how long you will remain undetected. So far you have seen, nor heard, any other living soul in the deserted passageways. You currently have the element of surprise on your side, and you pray that Vonatar is unprepared for an intruder from the depths of his own fortress. You reach the landing and pass through an empty hall towards a darkened arcway beyond. Here, the passage splits and branches off towards the east and west. You are hungry and must now eat. Eat one of our meals. If you wish to take the East Passage, turn to 92. If you want to take the West Passage, we will head west. You've been walking along the passage for less than five minutes when it veers sharply northwards. Just ahead to your left, you can see a large stone door. The lever is up and the door is closed. Pull the lever. The stone portal creaks open and grinds to a halt halfway across. The gap is a little over two feet wide and you're only just able to squeeze through into the chamber beyond. The air of the room is cold and stale. The chamber has laid undisturbed for thousands of years. Stone shelves stacked high with bottles and flasks. On a table in the centre lies a beautiful pack full of different coloured potions. Sure, examine the potions. Four ornate glass vials. Red, orange, green, and black liquids. Red? Wiping the grime from the stopper, stopper, you unscrew it and sniff it. I have the discipline of healing, so we may learn more about it. It is distilled lampspur, a herb of great healing properties. This concentrated potion is powerful enough to restore five hit points, if you wish. Sure. The orange potion. The stopper on the vial is jammed, and you have to take great care not to break the slender glass neck. It gradually loosens, and you sniff the orange liquid. I do have six cents, but not weapon skill, so we may learn more about this. It is a potion to be distilled alpha. A potion of strength. Your Kai Masters used it to increase their combat skill in battle. And there is enough to increase your combat skill by four for the duration of a single combat. For it 
To be effective, you must swallow it immediately before your fight. If you wish to keep the vial, sure. Yes, please, we've got space for that. But now I'm going to be forced to pick, do I throw away meals? Hmm. You manage to remove most of the hardened wax that covers the stopper and ease the reluctant seal from its fragile glass stem. We do have animal kinship. You recognize the aroma of concentrated gallow brush or sleep tooth. This is a thorny briar your Kai masters use to induce sleep when tending to ill or injured horses. A distilled brew from this plant is a powerful sleeping potion. So I will lose our banana. We'll assume that the banana has somehow has reasonably gone off by now. Rather than coming with us across the ocean. And the final potion. If you want to break the seal, you must ris risk smashing it. If you wish to, turn here, or if you are suspicious or do not wish to break it. Yeah, no. Black liquid can stay. I don't want to get infected with... Oh. I don't want to get infected with, um... Alien. You notice that the ceiling and walls of the corridor are covered with strange carvings. They seem to be depict small cyclones or tornadoes. Gradually changing shape into an almost human form. Though puzzled by the strange hieroglyphs, you continue until you reach a point where the tunnels take a sharp right turn. Only a few feet along the northern wall is another stone floor. The lever in the wall next to it is raised and the door is closed. Several yards ahead, a flight of stairs disappears upwards. Investigate the door. You depress the lever and the stone door slides aside to reveal a large chamber. It is cold, stale, and empty, except for a granite chest. Sure, examine the chest. The faces of grotesque and distorted creatures adorn the surface of the chest. Their obscene expressions and unnatural proportions make you shudder with revulsion. Set into the center of the lid is a large stone block carved with a hideous face, the mouth of which is shaped like a keyhole. If you have the ornate silver key, you may try and use it. So the key that we found in the snake room, or the big crystal worm room, was that it? Yep, ornate silver key, yes, yes, so... Sure. You insert the key and turn it clockwise, it clicks, confirming that it works. The shank of the key slips from your grip and disappears into the lock. And the great stone lid opens to reveal a magnificent silver helm. Remember to erase the ornate silver key from your action chart. If you have six cents, you sense that it has magical properties that can aid you in combat, and you detect no evil surrounding the item. Sure. Despite its size, the silver helm feels light and comfortable. Mark it on your action chart as a special item. If you're already we wearing another helmet, discard it. If you wish to keep it, if worn during combat, it will increase your combat skill by two points. The lid of the chest closes slowly, and you leave the chamber, elated with your magnificent discovery. You continue along the corridor and explore the staircase ahead. You climb over a hundred stone steps before arriving at a narrow landing. Pick a number from the random number table. If you have the Kai Discipline of Sixth Sense Tracking or Hunting, add three. To your right, you notice that a stone door is cunningly concealed by an intricate wall carving. A close examination of the carving reveals a lever. Pull the lever, Kronk! The stone door moves slowly to one side. It reveals a narrow arcway that is full of billowing and swirling mist, hiding whatever lurks beyond. You notice a severe drop in temperature. If you have Sixth Sense, and if you have reached Guardian, turn to 34. If you have Sixth Sense but have not reached Guardian, 
So how do I find out that? I think that's just how many of the previous books you've done. And seeing as we've done every book, I think that we have, have that rank. If you do not have six cents, you prepare yourself to fight and pass through the Misty Ark. You can sense the presence of a powerful life force beyond the Misty Ark. As you concentrate, you suddenly recall a tale told to you when you were a small child. The Legend of the Vagnadian Gate. It was a tale of ice demons and how they fought a war to be able to leave their world and come to cult. Formless creatures without shape or substance, existing as pure energy from another dimension. Beyond the confines of space and time, the ice demons discovered the Vagadin Gate, a sort of door between their world and Magnament. They fought each other to enter. Unaware of the fate that waited them, the ancients also discovered the gate. Hail, Mount Bizzle. Really? Isn't that approximately how much it costs anyway? Okay, it's only a little bit more than that. Um, as the ice demons passed through Vagadin, their spirits were imprisoned in crystals by the cunning ancients, who harnessed the power of the ice demons to build Ikaya. The Mlare bowls that light the fortress each contain the spirits of lesser ice demons trapped within. You also remember the tale warns against destroying the crystal prisons. <clears throat> if an ice demon is released, it will seek to claim the body of its rescuer. Forewarned by your skill, you enter the Misty Ark. So don't destroy the crystals. You enter a massive chamber, ill-lit and icy cold. A hidden temple of the ancients. The floor is made from slabs of quartz and granite and is littered with rock and ice. Your eye follows a line of tall pillars leading towards a sacrificial altar set in an alcove in the northern wall. Upon this altar lies a strange statue, which seems to be carved from smooth white stone. At its head and feet, black staves rest upright in holes bored into the stone altar. If you wish to cross the temple and advance towards the staircase, turn to 60. If you wish to cross the temple floor by stepping only on the quartz flagstones, turn to 168. If you wish to, wish to cross by only stepping on the granite flagstones, so... I'm gonna go with black? You carefully make your way across the floor until you are standing next to the altar. The statue seems cold and lifeless, but you sense that something is trapped within. You can almost hear its desperate cries for release. We will not be smashing the crystal that we were told contains an ice demon. As you pass through the arcway, you notice a lever set into the dark stone wall. You pull it and the door slides across, sealing the temple behind you. The temperature is warmer and you can hear a low rumbling sound somewhere in the distance. Ahead, you can see a light at the end of the dark passageway. You discover that it is shining out of an uh, oblong portal, close to the floor, through which you can see a corridor ten feet below. If you wish to squeeze through the portal and drop into the corridor, or if you wish to continue along the passage... One sec, sorry. Hmm. Hmm. No squeezing. You advance into the darkness, feeling ahead with your weapon for any obstruction. From some distance, the tunnel... For some distance, the tunnel continues northwards before turning sharply to your right. A few feet ahead, you can see light streaming from another portal. Beyond is a staircase descending into darkness. Sure. Twenty feet below the portal, you see a man dressed in a dark cloak. He is kneeling in the center of a large pentagram, chalked on the floor. How about we don't interrupt the demon summoning man? At the bottom of the staircase, you discover a tunnel going northwards. You're about to follow it when your hand... T 
touches a lever pr protruding from the wall to your right. A closer examination reveals a secret door. Sure. The door opens to reveal a wide, well-lit corridor running north to south. The low rumbling noise you detected earlier seems louder than in the darkness of the passage behind. To your left you see a door and in the distance a junction. Sure, investigate the junction. On the west wall of the corridor you see another stone door with a small spy hole cut into the center, revealing a cell on the other side. An old man is huddled in the far corner, his face and hair matted with blood and dirt. His blue robes so filthy that the crescent stars embroidered on them are almost obscured. Uh, he sounds like he's being tortured and he's one of the friendly wizards. Upon my soul, a Kai Lord, he exclaims, eyes wide with astonishment. I've prayed for freedom, for deliverance from this infernal place. And although hope never deserted me, I never expected such an illustrious rescuer. In the midst of his excitement, the old man is suddenly disturbed by a fit of coughing, leaving him pale and exhausted. It is a few minutes before he can speak. My name is Loi Kaimar, elder of the Magician's Guild of Torin, he says, slowly removing a crystal pendant, the symbol of the guild, from beneath his tattered robes. It is known as the Brotherhood of the Crystal Star, and the Magician shows you his pendant as proof of his identity. You ask him how he came to be imprisoned here, hundreds of miles from his native Torin. Vonatar, that unspeakable wretch, is responsible for my plight. Days before the Dark Lord's invasion of Summerland, he betrayed your masters to win power. The black power of death and darkness. He failed to play his part in the war plans his evil masters had laid out. The Dark Lords do not tolerate failure. Mercy has no place in their brutal minds. In the bitterness of defeat, they sought to destroy him for his crime of failure. Vonatar knew that I possessed the only means to effect an escape from their vengeance, for my guild staff has the power of teleportation. He tried to steal it and flee to the safety of Ikaya by himself, but he learned that its power is not for men to share. Only I am blessed with its secret. He was angry and would have murdered my kinspeople had I not agreed to bring him here, and I had no choice but to do so. Ever since, I have been a prisoner in this cell. He has tortured my body and my mind, though I have not yet divul divulged the secret of my guild staff, which he now keeps in the Hall of the Brumalmark. For if I were to tell him, my life would no longer be of any value. You tell Louis Kamar your mission and the events that have led to your meeting. He offers to show you a route through Ikaya to the Hall of the Brumalmark, where he resides, where the bad guy resolves as its ruler. If you can retrieve his guild staff, he will teleport you to the coast in time to rendezvous with your ship. For the first time since you fell into the caverns, you feel confident that your mission can succeed. I do not have a glowing crystal. Follow me, says Louis Kaimar. I have listened to the sounds of Ikaya for over a year, and the secret sliding doors and hidden routes are no mystery to me. I have learnt more about these corridors and passageway than the confines of my cell than Vonatar has discovered with all his cunning. You follow him through a network of secret passages and tunnels, up long flights of stairs, and into chambers dark and cold. At the top of one very steep staircase, you come to a stone door. A strange, sickly smell is seeping from a small spy hole. The kitchens, whispers Koi, lo Koi Loi Kaimar, showing his distaste for Ikaya cuisine by sticking out his tongue and grimacing. You can see that the secret door opens next to a fireplace in which burns a roaring fire. Hanging over the fire is a large stone cauldron with gruel. Two ice barbarians sit at the table nearby with empty bowls in front of them. We could use our potion here to put them asleep. You take the potion from your backpack, open the door just wide enough to be able to empty the contents of the vial into the bubbling cauldron. You don't have to wait long for the barbarians to fall asleep after their meal. Remember to remove the potion from your special items list. The kitchen is small and surprisingly well stocked with herb. These are from the trading posts at Ulduk, says Loi Kaimar, peering closely at the labelled jars. Opening two 
herb jars, he mixes the contents and offers them to you. I will give- it will give you strength, Lone Wolf, he says. You eat the dry leaves and feel a warm glow radiating through your body. Restore up to six health. We're on the same level as the Hall of the Brummel Mark. He whispers. It is at the end of this corridor. Two ice barbarians stand beside a jewel-encrusted door that led to the Great Hall. They are covered from head to toe in strange bone armor and armed with crystal swords. The old wizard step back from the door and says we must deal with them silently and swiftly. He takes three jars from his pockets and mutters a strange incantation as he mixes the contents together in a stone bowl. There is a pitcher of water on the table. He splashes a few drops onto the herbs. A wisp of blue smoke rises. This will silence the guards if we can move close enough to them. We could use our ability to float small objects. You draw, draw on your powers of concentration to levitate the bowl of fuming herbs and send it hovering along the corridor. You bring it to rest in the shadow of the... Pilaster? Not plaster, pilaster. What is a... Pilaster. A rectangular column, especially one projecting from a wall. And watch its effects with great curiosity. For in less than a minute, the ice barbarian guards have collapsed to the floor. Now is our chance, whispers Loy Kaimar, and he ushers you out of the kitchen. You approach the hall of the Brumel Mark, undetected, and discover that one of the magnificent jeweled doors is unlocked. Drawing your weapon, you push the door gently ajar and enter Vonatar's cabin. Well, chamber. The Hall of the Brumel Mark is a vast chamber constructed of crystal blocks, blocks rising to a central plateau. On this stands the Brumel Mark throne, as old as Ikaya itself. There, Vonatar sits, surrounded by the tomes of eldritch trappings of a necromancer. He is wrapped in study and does not see you enter. He remains oblivious to your presence until Loi Kaimar sneezes. Who dares disturb me? He hisses from the Brumel Mark throne, his eyes searching for an intruder. Upon seeing you, he emits a horrified gasp and stumbles for his black staff. He has the look of a criminal who has been discovered in the act of some dreadful crime. You raise your weapon and begin to climb the crystal pyramid. You know you have little time to reach him if you are to overpower and capture him alive. You reach the edge of the plateau in time to see a wide circle of blocks descending around the throne. Between you and Vonatar is a deep moat. From the depths of the moat, you hear a ghastly, inhuman gibbering. You brace yourself for combat, but are unprepared for the horror that faces you. Holy moly. From out of the dark slithers a huge, ghoulish green monster, its deformed head a mass of tentacles and suckers that ooze a putrid black slime. At the center of this math, of this writhing mass, is a hideous yellow eye which pulsates. He has control over the monster and is directing it towards you. Do we possess an effigy? No, because we don't have that option available. Okay, but we do have the summer sword. The tentacled horror rises from the moat and attacks you. You glimpse Vonatar rising, raising his black staff and fixing his gaze towards Loi Kaimar. He is attacking the old, old magician with his mind force. You realize that if he's killed, the secret of the guild staff will die with him. Before you can do anything else, you must fight the monster to death. This is Akranior, one of the undead. Remember to double damage done during this combat because of the summer sword. It has a lot of health, 50. We will use our potion of even more combat skill. We do 32 damage in a single hit. You are able to defeat it without taking too much damage. We won the combat quickly. As the vile Akra Ninor quivers and dies, Vonatar breaks off his mind combat and runs back towards the Brumelmark throne. Loi Kaimar is shaken badly, but has survived the ordeal. He'll j he quickly joins you at the end of the moat and casts a handful of herbs down into the darkness. Within seconds, a mass of vines and creepers coil upwards to form a bridge. You are halfway across the bridge when Vonatar suddenly reappears, crystal rod 
held high in his hands. He takes aim at the mass of creepers, and a chilling cone of frost hurdles from the rod's tip. If you possess the summer sword, you may use absorb magic. You point the summer sword towards the crystal rod. In an instant, the cone of frost arcs away from the bridge and shatters against the golden sword. You hear him curse you once again. The power of the summer sword saves you from his destructive magic. Your time has come, shouts a voice. But it is Loi Kaimar and not Vonatar who speaks. A knot of herbs flies through the air and hits Vonatar squarely in the chest. In an instant, the hunchback wizard is engulfed in a tangle of vines that ensnare him from head to toe. Loi Kaimar bridges the moat with more creepers and joins you upon the platform. Be sure to remove his rings and amulets, he says, as he busily searches for his guild staff. He is a master of trickery. We would not want him to miss the special homecoming that awaits him in Summerland. You marvel at the old man's composure. After such a desperate fight, he is completely unruffled. Ah! Here she is, he announces triumphantly, as she withdraws his guild staff from beneath the Brumal Mark throne. You pass him your map of cult and point to the location of the cardinal. I'll not be needing that, he replies a little contemptuously. Maps are invariably wrong. I prefer to rely on my own sense of direction. He raises his staff and a dazzling beam of light shoots from its tip. He makes three wide sweeps of the air and the whole of Brimelmark is transformed into an umbrella of colour. As the colours fade, you become aware of the sudden drop in temperature. You now stand upon the Lyuk ice shelf at a point less than half a mile from where the Cardinal lies at anchor. Koi, Loi Kaimar and Vonatar are close by, shivering in the chill morning air. Within minutes, you are sighted by the ship's lookout and a longboat is dispatched. As a wriggling Vonatar is hoisted unceremoniously above the Cardinal and deposited in the brig, the captain is the first to congratulate you on your skill and daring. How did you manage to return so quickly, he asks incredulously. We were not expecting you for ten more days. Let us say, interrupts Loi Kaimar, that the wisdom of the Kai and the lore of the Magician's Guild can surpass the limitations of even time itself. A puzzled expression cr crosses the captain's face, but it's gradually replaced by a smile as he begins to understand the Magician's curious answer. Your journey to Anscanvel is swift, but you are saddened by your memories of the brave guides that were left behind. Your arrival in the port is greeted by an anxious crowd. They f fear that you return, your early return is a sign of failure. When the news of Vonatar's capture becomes known, your warrior skills are required once again. This time, in defense of your enemy against the seething mob of outraged summer lending that assault the jail. Safe passage is eventually secured to Torren, where trial awaits the traitor. Upon the dawn of the Feast of Mazeman, in the depths of the Guild Hall of the Crystal Star, Vonatar the traitor is tried by his brotherhood and found guilty of his terrible crimes. He is led away in silence to the deepest chamber of the Guild Hall, wherein lies the Dazian, a portal of to a portal of total darkness. The door of an eternal prison from which there can be no escape. You are the avenger of his crimes, and it is you who casts the wretched traitor into the limbo of Dazian. Your mission is now completed. You have survived the caverns of cult and freed Summerland from the menace of Vonatar. But the heat of battle and the challenge of a new and desperate quest awaits you in book four of the Lone Wolf series, entitled The Chasm of Doom. All right, we've earned back our... We have a book without a death. So we're rolling above our average par. Good. That one felt a bit shorter, but... Again, once you have the Summer Sword, it takes a while before the games work out how to balance it properly, from memory. The Summer Sword just lets you cruise through fights. Join us next time in The Chasms of Doom!